everyone, my name is Jan Radu, thanks for joining me today. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I live in Perth in WA. I'll be bringing this project to you today. It's a cute little window partial die cut card using the brand new Counting Sheep stamp set. And as you can see, um, he is flat on the front here and he's die cut out. And I'll give you a few tips on how to stamp him perfectly into his shape there. And when you open the card, you've got another cute little party sheep jumping over the fence. I thought this was just a little fun card with a bit of ink blending and it's nice and bright and colourful. So the Counting Sheep stamp set is free during celebration with a qualifying $90 order. And the matching dies are also available with another qualifying order of $90. And the brochure that that comes from is the celebration brochure. And as you can see, it started on the 3rd of August. It goes all the way through to the 30th of September. So if you flick through to page 10 and 11, you'll see the entire suite there. So if you do plan your orders right, you could order once in August, once in September, and earn the stamp set followed by the dies and have this full suite. So the suite's really fun for birthdays, but as you can imagine, it's just nice for encouragement cards as well. You've got your amazing on there. Um, and there's some really cute samples in that catalogue. If you are in Australia and you don't have a demonstrator, I'd be happy to organise a catalogue for you. And you can order from either the mini catalogue or the annual catalogue to build up your qualifying orders. Um, and again, if you haven't got a copy of those and you live in Australia, reach out and let me know. So I've already loaded my dies into my stamp set. I use a magnetic sheet just from Red Dot or the local $2 shop and just cut it down to size, stick it in, give myself a little label so I know what I'm working with. And that way I never have to try and think of, do I have the dies that match or don't I? It's all in a nice package for me there. And I'll have to put a little disclaimer on this video. Texas, my schnauzelier, is in the craft room with me today. And he will be tick, tick, ticking on the floor with his nails, I'm sure. So the first step with uh, making this card, I'm going to bring in my basic white thick card base. It's half an A4 sheet of cardstock, scored in half, at, scored at ten and a half. And the first thing we'll do is just fold that over and give it a nice crease with my bone folder. Then we're going to set up the dies for the partial die cut window on there and I'm still using the big shot so I'm going to bring in my magnetic platform and my cutting plate. I'm going to position my card base onto the bone cutting plate and then bring in the stitched rectangle framelits and that's what's going to help me create this little window here and for that I'm going to be using the second largest framelit you can see I've got my dies here on a another magnetic sheet um, which I've just cut to a square to fit that little package it just keeps them so neat and tidy so what we're going to do is place the die just hanging off the card base there and I'm just looking for a bit of an even-ish border and try and get the dies a little bit straight through there and then I'm going to bring the sheep die in that we're going to use to cut this little party sheep out so he is the standing one where are we here we go and just looking at where his feet are positioned I'm, it's going to help me indicate how far up from the bottom of the card I want to place my die. And then halfway down is little round bottom. How far away from the stitched edge is that going to be as well? So I think we've got that in around about the right position. Now, if you don't have uh, the magnetic platform, um, you can just use some low tack tape. Um, just turn my light off there which you can see um, I've reused and reused this one which is perfect because it's, there's less chance then of it um, actually tearing your paper but because I'm using the magnetic platform mine will stay fairly nice and in the same position so I'm just going to position my um, second cutting plate around about halfway up his bottom there and that is going to ensure 
that only the parts that are underneath the second plate are going to cut and nothing down here is going to cut. So I just want to make sure that that's in the right position. Hold it nice and tight and then run that through my cutting machine. Okay, so as you'll see, once I pull this die up, we've got a nice clean cut through there. And pulling the sheep die off as well, we've just got half of that impression of the sheep there. Now I'm bringing in my stamp and trimmer, and that's going to help us cut the remainder of our window and pop out this piece of cardstock that we don't need. So to do that, I'm just going to position the edge of where the dies have cut as close as possible to my cutting line, if you can see that there. And when I put this down, I can check in my track to see whether that is lined up with the bottom of the stitching, and that looks pretty good to me. Before I push this down, I'm going to just slide my my cutting blade over and using the indication on the edge of the blade I'm going to line that up with the stitching and then when I put it down I know I'm going to be starting to cut in the right spot and then I'm going to draw it towards my sheep and you can stop a little bit earlier if you're not 100% sure where that is um, you can always finish it off with scissors and then I'm holding my cardstock down lifting it up moving the blade along again positioning the blade that little notch in line with my die or with my stitching i should say and pushing and drawing back towards the sheep on this side so when i lift it up so i've stopped a little bit short on over there i can finish that with scissors or i can go back and providing you haven't shifted the paper you can just do a little bit more of a cut and I've got that nice and dead online there. So now you can see my little windows already starting to pop out there beautifully, which is great. I've got a little bit on my, on my uh, rectangle that hasn't quite cut, so I'm just going to pull that apart. And I can use some scissors just to clean off that little fluff there. So now you can see that's how we have created our partially die cut window. Now I'm bringing in my Stamparatus now and I'm putting the hinges to the right and the bottom as you can see and I've got my plate on the right side. I've also got a piece of our window sheet. This is just a spare little piece of acetate and it's a decent size but it doesn't have to be the way that I've got it this was just an off cut just a good square or something like that would be useful so we're going to put the acetate down nice and hard into the corner and then we'll secure that with our magnets we'll bring the sheep die out that we need which again is the standing sheep And we're going to just place him up the top here on our acetate. And the reason I'm placing him so high is because I want a little bit of manoeuvring room when I put my card in there. I don't, if I put him down, sort of say down here, all of a sudden this corner gets in the way and I can't manoeuvre my card around. So let's just pop him up the top and we'll pick him up with our plate. Now we're going to bring in some Memento Black ink and I'm just going to give that a little ink. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. It's just a little indication on our acetate. And I will just stamp that down there. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is position my card underneath. I can move this magnet out of the way because I've butted it up into the corner and it's really not going to go anywhere. I can just slide my card underneath and use that stamped image as a positioning guide to make sure I've got a nice even border around my little party sheep. Now I'm going to pop the magnets onto the white cardstock. We don't want that to move anywhere. I can move my acetate out of the way. Now I want a good inking of my sheep this time. And we'll 
we'll bring him down. Let my little press in. And when I lift him up, you'll see he's beautifully positioned. I'll just bring that in a little bit closer for you. And you can see he's beautifully positioned in there. And that wasn't too many steps. This is a really handy little tool for when you're trying to get just that right position on your card. So using that same sheep die, I've got a pack of post-it notes just from Officeworks, our local um, office supplies place. And I've got a nice big strip of adhesive on these, which I really like for creating masks. So I'm just going to run a mask through with my sheep die as close as possible to that sticky end. And now I can mask off that sheep ready for my ink blending. I'm actually going to use the top of the sheep as my placement guide. If I line that mask up nice and tight to the top there, I know I'm going to get good coverage down there uh, around his feet. And I feel like I'm a tiny little bit off, so I'm just going to reposition that there. Luckily mine are see-through, so I can see how far his um, feet are covered down there and I'm happy with that. So that's my mask prepared. I'm also going to, while I have it here, uh, mask off the top of my card base and that is for when I'm ink blending the sky and that will just protect the back of my card. So again, these ones are great because they're nice and generously sized. And now I'm going to bring in the Granny Apple Green ink pad. And I've got one of our blending brushes here that I've obviously used with um, a range of greens in the past. If you haven't used our blending brushes, the easiest way to do it is to pick up a little bit of ink. You want to tap a little bit of ink off on your scratch paper and then just bring it in from the corner. Now what you want to be doing is building up levels of ink. You don't want to have a whole ton of ink coming onto your card at the same time. I'm also just going a little bit past the stitching for my grassed area. And I'm just going to hold the mask down when I'm inking over those sections. You don't want to be too rough and you don't want the mask lifting where there isn't sticky. And you can do this as dark as you like. You can have a really solid blend of the green or you can have a bit more of a splotchy look like I have in my card. Just keep going, adding it bit by bit. And I'm happy with that look. So now I'm going to switch over to the Balmy Blue. I'll just turn my cardstock around. And coming in from the other direction for the sky. And when that blending's all finished, we can pull off our masking sheets. And this is the great reveal. When you can see you've got a really beautiful crisp edge for your sky there. And when we peel off our sheep, you can see he's got a lovely little border around his feet there. And it just appears like he's been popped in front, but you've actually got a nice flat surface. So I have pre-prepared all of the pieces that we need for our card today. So I have got another piece, another rectangle piece of basic white cut for inside. I have got my two fences in cinnamon cider. I've got my little sun in daffodil delight, a balmy blue cloud, and cut a little uh, banner out of the matching DSP and also the little party hats I've already pre-stamped. Now I should tell you where this DSP comes from. This is a hostess reward in the back of the annual catalogue. Um, if you click 
uh, flip through to host and join you'll see um, there's this super pack here of pattern party 12 by 12 DSP and I say super pack because there's 48 sheets of double-sided uh, pattern paper there and if you um, either host a party, collect a bunch of orders or place a large enough order for yourself, you will earn Stampin' Rewards. And you can use those Stampin' Rewards to purchase this pattern party paper for free. It is valued at $31. It's a fantastic set because the other side of the pattern, one is bright and the other side is black and white. So it's very useful. Now I'll just show you these catalog tabs as well. These are available to demonstrators. Um, I gift them to my um, VIP customers. So if you are one of my VIPs, you've received a set of those tabs. And that just helps you flip through really easily to different sections of the catalog. So I'm going to go ahead now and repeat that ink blending for the inside panel of my card. I'm going to use a pencil just to get a bit of an indication of how far up the green grass section needs to go. So I know I don't want my stitching showing when my window is closed. So it's going to be around about there. That's quite straight there. So I'm just going to do a little indication with my pencil as to where I need to finish my granny apple green and start my balmy blue. Okay, while I've got my ink out, I'm actually just going to stamp my little grass sections there. I'm just going to test how much pressure I have. I don't want to get too much ink around the edge of my stamp, as you can see I have done there. So I'm just going to take that off and have a little lighter tap and just make sure I'm not going to get any of that ink transfer. Now I do want one just under his feet just to help ground him a little bit and another one just under that foot there and then we're just going to pop one up here and we're always working in fives or threes or odd numbers so we're going to go for five here and then just one more down there. So that's the grass inked up there so I'm bringing in my pattern uh, piece for inside of my card, again from that pattern party 12 by 12. And we're just gonna go ahead and assemble the pattern piece, the um, blended section, and also the, the two fences on the inside, and we can pop those down. And now on the front of the card, I can go ahead and do this little sentiment section. So I have stamped a one and a half strip of basic white with the um, So Glad It's Your Birthday sentiment from the stamp set. And that's going to be popped up on dimensionals. Now I've just cut a little jaunty angle on here. Um, there's no secret to that. You just twist your cardstock in your trimmer and just choose an angle that is visually appealing to you and um, go ahead and slice a little section off. So if you're new to my channel, it would be great if you could um, hit that subscribe button and follow along by hitting the bell as well and you'll be notified when I upload any new videos. Um, I'm a fairly new um, YouTuber so I really do appreciate any feedback that I get on my videos. So if there's something that you would like to see or something that you thought really helped you, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. 
or you can uh, you can contact me on social media as well at Stamping Elegance. Um, I do post on my Instagram quite regularly, and I also uh, do often accompany a video with a blog post with extra details on there for you. So with the clouds, I'm just going to nestle him in there just so that he's not covering too much of the uh, sentiment, but I do like the idea of the sentiment peeking out from the cloud. And then with the sun, we're just going to put that one down with a little dob of Tombow, which is now all over my finger. There we go. And he's just going to nestle in there, um, just going over a little bit into our window. Now we can go on to the colouring of our sheep, which um, I've used really simple colouring um, with just a couple of blends. I am using the ivory from the skin tone set. I'm using the dark smoky slate for his hooves. And I'm also using a pink marker from my stash um, for just a little bit of uh, pink detail on the cheeks. Okay, so that's the colouring finish. So we can now go ahead and pop the little accessories onto this party sheep here. So I'm just going to put just a little bit of, I really want to make sure I don't want too, too much Tombow at all on his little hat there. It's such strong adhesive and it does squidgy out if you put too much. So I'm just putting just a little bit there. On his hat maybe it needs to be a little bit more of a jaunty angle there we go and then on the inside to put the banner on I want even a smaller the smallest of smallest bit that I can get on there and then we're just going to pop his banner so it looks like he's waving his party banner on there and I think it can come in useful to use a little block just to push that one down. Give it a second until it gets a good stick. And the block can sometimes pick up some extra glue as well, which helps. So that's our sheep with his party gear on. And this one here also needs his little party hat and I've got him coasting over the fence so we're just going to pop him down with some Tombow on there as if he's jumping for joy and we really want when we close the card to have some nice space between the two sheep so we'll just position him like that and we'll add his party hat as well When you try to get a tiny bit of Tombow, you either get nothing or a big splodge. So there's his party hat. And that is today's card finished. So quite an impressive uh, looking card and um, not too difficult steps. A few little tricks and tips in there to help you out along the way. I do hope you liked my project. Um, please subscribe, send me a message if you liked what you saw and I would love to see you again. Thanks a lot.